Um, happy Friday to everyone. Uh, so kind of like I said, what we're going to do is um, the kind of like what we did last week was four things, um, four times. But today we're going to focus on if we're going to adapt to those things. So I'm going to go a bit slower than last week and kind of make sure that on you know, each one that we do, we're doing um, two of the same things and two different things that you understand, like, if we're going to adapt it, this is what we're going to do. Um, and the adaptation will work different for everyone. Don't feel like as soon as I show you something, you're going to fit right into it because that might not happen, as we all know. So you may have to tweak with it and play with it a little bit. Um, so I'm more interested in doing the four um, all perfectly good form is what I'm trying to say instead of like going through fast. So instead of going through fast, I'm going to slow down um, and make sure that we're hitting the, the pose exactly right. And we can hold that because then we won't hurt ourselves and then we can do it more and more and more. So that's the idea. So let's start by stretching though. Um, so let's start. I don't know if you guys remember the ones on your sides where you're opening up your shoulders. So you're just flat on the ground hands out in front of you on your sides and you're just nice and easy. Um, as I lay on my side, like if I was in um, the fetal position, I'm just not curled up so tight. And then I have my two hands pressed together and I'm going to just tip my, my top hand all the way back behind me to the ground. And I'm going to just tap the ground with my finger. So I'm kind of pointing my finger and I just tap it. And then I come back over and I'm going to do that 10 times, but I want you to go nice and slow. Because as you come past like what would be 12 o'clock, it starts to really get kind of engaged in your shoulder. And I just want you to have that nice and loosened because when we do a plank, then you're not going to hurt your shoulder. So a lot of times I'll just kind of hang out on that backside and just kind of feel that stretch a little bit deeper. And then I'll bring it back over. So you want to do 10 of those and then we're going to flip and do the other side. Like I said, don't, it's not a fast movement. It's a nice, easy like arm of a clock going by nice and slow. And then once you get to 10 on that side, just go ahead and kind of roll yourself. And we're going to do that other side. And it shouldn't feel like it shouldn't feel painful. It should feel like if you're getting a deep stretch, that's good. Um, but you shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be hurting your shoulder. If it's hurting your shoulder, you're probably leaning too far back on your arm. Um, and you're probably asking your arm like to be at a at an odd angle. So you want to kind of be at that 12 o'clock position um, so that you can really kind of just rock through. And usually you'll find one side better is more flexible than the other. Like this, when I go this way, I'm a lot more flexible. When I go the other way, my shoulder is really tight for some reason. I don't really understand that. And it's always been like that. I used to think, oh, it was the injury I had, but it's, I have no idea what it is. So just nice open-ended stretch, nice and loose. Easy. Cool. Once you get done with that, we're going to do, because you're down on the ground already, we are going to do just a reverse. Um, so this would be almost like a plank. So I'm on my belly. I have my arms in front of me. My hands are flat on the ground. And all we're going to do is we're just going to push up. Don't push up hard. Don't push up a lot. It should not hurt you. It should be a nice, smooth, just a little bit of a, a, a push up, almost like a, a cat kind of pushing up their head. And then I go back down. I kind of go up and hold it for five seconds, and then I go back down. And I do that like 10 times, just again, just to kind of reverse that kind of spine that I've been sitting at my computer bent over doing. Um, this kind of reverses some of that. It makes it feel better. I have uh, fusions in my back, my lower back and my neck. So when I do these, I go into a really slow and gentle because I don't want to, number one, I don't want to tweak the, the hardware. And number two, if I go too fast, I get like a, it's almost like a cramp. It's not a real cramp, but it feels like a cramp. It feels like my back starts to spasm. So take it really gentle. Um, and like I said, I just kind of come up easy. If it feels like it's a little too tight when you have your arms in close, push your arms out further in front of you and then just let that stretch happen that way. So then you're not pushing up as much as out. And then I just kind of hold myself there. And then when I'm ready to rest, I brisk tuck my elbows back in. And then if I want to stretch it again, I push my elbows out 
and just kind of get my back to hold me up a little bit. So you won't come up as high as this, pushing up this way in the front, but you will be still getting up a little bit in the air. So I kind of push it out in front. And then when I'm resting, I'm just on my elbows. Um, and for me, this is actually one of the most uncomfortable positions, again, because of the hardware and back injuries I've had. So I'm guessing sometimes a lot of you guys are doing that same thing where you have like certain positions just won't be happy. And so I try not to do those positions. It sounds kind of silly, but I try to avoid them if I can. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we did them last week. It's called cat and cow. And cat and cow is just from a kneeling position. You're kind of, you're doing the cat, which is the bridging of the back from the kneel. And the cow is the saggy back from the kneeling. So you're always kneeling on all fours. And it's just a nice, really gentle stretch. You're not trying to do anything crazy, you're just going nice and slow. So you're pushing your back way up in the air, and then you're pulling your belly down to the ground. And I kind of, I hold it for two or three seconds, and I just kind of keep doing it. And I do that like 10 times as well. And that kind of gets my back warmed up, feels pretty good. When my wife does them, she moves like a cow, and then she also makes the cat sound. But our dogs go crazy. So again, just kind of do 10 of those. All right. So we are going to start off with some planks. Um, again, if you want to do any kind of adapt, I'm gonna set a timer for these. If you want to set up any kind of an adaptation, we're gonna do front planks, front planks first. That's hard to say. Um, and I will show you where I would put the block for me. Um, so if I was coming up into it and I was feeling like I couldn't hold the plank, I'd have it right around my belly button so that when I sag, I'm onto the block and I can feel a lot of the weight come off. Um, that can be anything under you. So if you have books, if you have magazines, whatever you want to, or a pillow actually works too. A pillow, you will sag down more, but just know that anything under right around your belly button will actually give you that same, you'll still be doing the plank position, but you won't have all that weight. Um, so say you don't do it for the first round and you do it for the second round, that's completely acceptable and actually smart. So you want to try to go for the four rounds if you can, but just kind of take your time and see where you have to adapt it uh, depending on what you're doing and how you feel. So we're gonna start off with a 30 second plank um, on the front. And we are going to start, oh, I don't need that, right now. So we're just gonna pull up into a nice strong plank, elbows bent, your bum is straight out behind you. You don't want your bum up in the air and you don't want it sagging down on the ground. So just think of like a two by four sitting on a curb. It's a nice straight line. And you just wanna hold that nice and steady. Again, if you feel like it's too much on your back, you can always just drop a knee or drop both knees and then go back up when you're ready. We're coming up on 30 seconds, that's 30 seconds. Good. And then when you're in a plank, drop back down to the ground. The nice thing, yeah, is uh, kind of just stretch your back again. Sometimes doing like a little downward dog helps. Downward dog is when you're crouching and you're just pushing your hands out in, for, in front of you, kind of just elongates the spine a little bit. The second thing we're going to do. Can I ask you a quick question? Totally. Um, so when you're in the plank, like, what is your, what is, what is your belly doing? Are you sucking the, your belly button towards your spine as you're like on your arms? Is that? Yes. Okay. And when you, so you'll hear like climbers always say core up. I don't know if you guys have heard that term before. So core up means as soon as I pull into the plank, like as soon as I lift my hips up off the ground, I tighten my stomach up. Like I, I, no, I'm not holding my breath, but I'm, it's almost like I'm holding my breath, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm tightening all my stomach muscles and I'm not letting them sag at all. So as soon as you let go a little bit, you'll feel your belly do this. And so we want to avoid this, but we also don't want to do that. 
So it's, it's that middle ground right there. And you can only get that middle ground by making your stomach hard. So pulling out, like sucking your belly button up towards your spine is a great way to visualize it if that helps you. But it also just visualize that you don't want the belly button dropping or going high. You want it right in the middle, like on a level, level plane. And that will give you, that will engage your back muscles and your core muscles at the same time. Does that make do sense? You have, do you have another way of visualizing that like belly button to spine? Like I, I, I do actually think that's a little hard for me to visualize, like, cause I, I can't, can't feel it, but. If you were to, um, do you remember when you were a kid, um, did you do any swimming when you were a kid, like underwater swimming? Yes. Okay. So I used to always do that. We used to swim underwater and when we would go under, we would take a really deep breath. And when you took the breath before you dove under, we would suck in like. Right. And jump, jump. It's that movement. It's that, that's the same movement. Okay. So it's almost, but don't, I don't want you to hold your breath though. Cause you'll pass out. We don't want that to happen. So think of it that way. You're like pulling that belly button in nice and tight okay. and take, like you're taking a deep breath, but okay. you're not holding your breath. Okay. Got you're, it. That's really helpful. Breathing the whole time. Okay, cool. cool. Thank you. That's a good question. Um, the next thing we're going to do are, uh, we're going to do some V-ups. So V-ups again are the ones where your feet are six inches off the ground and your hands are behind your head and you're coming up to your, sh your shins. So you can touch your shins or you don't have to touch your shins, but you're then going back down and we're going to try to keep our feet floating off the ground like six inches each time. So then we can pull up into it, touch our shins, back down and then up, touch our shin. We're gonna start with five of those, and we're gonna go five, 10, 15, 20. So we're gonna do four, um, but for the first time, all you gotta do is five. Um, so let's see. Hey, Craig, did, did you see my message? Oh, no, I didn't, sorry. No, no you're good. I uh, just wanted to, you're doing great, just a reminder, we do have someone with a visual impairment on with us, so if you can just be crazy descriptive for, right for them, that'd be awesome. Can do, can do. So the V up, um, just starting uh, with that is you'll be flat on your back. And then as you begin to engage your stomach, so like, again, almost that, that, that holding breath again, you're gonna pull your feet up off the ground about six inches and your arms are gonna be over your head like you're Superman flying. And as you're ready to start into a, the shape of a V, you're gonna bring your hands to where your feet are. So your feet are gonna come up in the air and your hands are gonna come up in the air. So in that same motion, you're just coming up to your shins, but you're not coming all the way up. You're coming about halfway up, just so you can touch your shins again. And that's all you're doing. And you're, you're gonna look like a spring almost. So the spring is like snapping you up and then back down and then snapping you up and then back down. And you're doing that nice and controlled. You don't wanna bounce. You just want it to be nice and slow and just kind of like this nice, as soon as your hands touch the ground, you're going right back up. You're not coming, you're not like laying flat. You want that to be a one easy motion. If you have trouble with your legs moving, if your legs aren't moving, um, then you're just gonna be doing the V, you're gonna do the half of the V. You're gonna come straight up. So if I'm down like this and my legs aren't working, I'm just gonna come up to here, but don't rock all the way over. I want you to stop about right here. So that's about a 90 degree, uh, less than 90 degrees. So. We don't want to even come halfway to our feet. We want to be at about a, I don't know, what is that, 40 degrees, something like that. So as I come up from that lay position, my hands are above my head. I'm just coming up to 40 degrees, stopping, and then I'm going right back down. What it, what it does by not going all the way over is you keep your stomach engaged and your muscles are, are tight the whole time. So as you come up, you're just going to go right back down. So if you or having trouble moving, uh, moving up high, you wanna just be bringing your shoulders up then. So if I'm down like this and my core is not working like on the lower section, then all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be bringing my shoulders up off the ground. Because again, you'll feel your core engage as soon as you do it. So I'm up like this and then I'm back down and then I'm up like this. And so I'm doing, I'm just rolling and peeling my, sh my shoulder blades off the ground but always keeping my arms nice and straight. So my arms are behind my head as I lay down. And then as I get ready, I peel my shoulders up and then I go back down and I just keep doing that. And again, we're gonna do, we'll start with, start with 10 of those. So let me reset. Um, anybody else questions? 
You guys look like you're ready, actually. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do ten in a row. You guys take your time, do them as as quickly or as slowly as you want. Um, and I am going to start us. So here we go. We're gonna do ten in a row. All right, let's go. One, whoa. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Two down. So, bird dogs. I think you guys I actually got that name from you guys last week. Um, so bird dogs are when we're kneeling and this should be a really, this should be more stretching than actual like, oh, this is really hard. It should feel nice and smooth to you. So a bird dog, if you just think of a hunting dog, um, hunting dog standing on his uh, legs, his four legs, he sees the bird, he puts, he points with his left hand and he sticks his right leg out behind him. I don't know if they actually do it that way. I'm gonna say they do though. So we wanna just get in that nice position as, as a dog and then stick out the opposite limbs. So left hand out in front, right leg out in back. And we just hold that, that's all. And it helps, for me anyway, it helps my balance if I look straight ahead. If I kind of do this, I kind of tip. I think that's just me. So maybe you guys don't tip, but I do. So what I do is as I stick it out, I just try to look straight ahead. Um, I keep my palm turned in towards the inside. It's just more comfortable as opposed to like flipping it or even straight out. This way just kind of feels pretty comfy for me. There's no right or wrong thing to do with your hand there. You can wave, it's up to you. So we're gonna do five of those. Um, we're gonna do five on our left and five on our right. I'm gonna start here. Okay. So five right in a row, and all we're gonna just go right up into it, hold it for a count, like a beat, like a one, and then right back down. So we're gonna do five of those. One, and stretch that back leg way out. Two, three, four, five. Now we're switching sides. Five more. One, really kick that leg. Two three, four, five, bird dogs. So the last one we're gonna do in this rotation is called, they're called block passes because you have a block. You don't need a block though. You can be doing anything to pass or you don't have to pass anything. So a, a regular block pass looks like this. I'm on my back. I have my block, it's in between my hands. And as I lay flat on my back, all I do is I bring my legs to my chest. So it's like I'm coming in nice and tight and I pass the block to myself and then I put it all the way out. And then I go up to the block, grab it, pull it back down. So all I'm doing is passing it to myself over and over. If you don't have a block, you can take your hands, come up, touch your toes, your feet I mean, and go back down. Come up, touch your feet, back down. You're not doing a full sit up though. You wanna just peel up just enough and you're really bringing your legs in. So we're actually doing two things. We're stretching our back out and our hips as well as tightening our core. So as I bring my feet up, my core gets nice and tight. And then as I let them down, my core stays tight. So as I'm peeling my shoulders up, if I'm just gonna to touch my knees, that's good. So just peel my, my legs to my, my hands and then back down and then peel my legs up back down so you'll feel your core engaged the whole time if you have something to pass i start them in my feet and then i just bring it up grab it go back down come up grab it go back down and we're just going to do that we're going to do 10 of those um, if you're not passing anything just keep track when you come back down and your hands touch the ground that's one every time so don't like I, I was doubling up for some reason when I was doing these before so you know this right here that's one so don't don't like a one two three you know, just get tired so 
We're gonna do 10 of those. We're gonna do them nice and slow. And I'm gonna pass the block to myself. I tip over doing this one too. It tells you a lot about my balance. Okay, we're gonna do 10. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay. And that is a full cycle. So I'm going to set a timer and we're going to take a three minute break. So if you guys have some water, drink some water. If you have any questions, ask, feel free. Um, yeah. You guys are killing it. I can see pieces of you flying through each of your frames. Except for Warhane, he still has, he has that, his animal hat on. That's all I can see. Um, and we're going to do those in the same order. So we're going to do planks, then we're going to do V-ups, then we're going to do bird dogs, and then last will be block passes. Oh, I found it. That's a minute and a half. So about another minute. What was the first one again? I forgot. We're gonna do planks first, front planks. Okay, okay cool. So if you guys, if you want to be using a block or something, um, this would be the time to, to fetch it, find it, recruit it. All right, coming up on two minutes. Okay, we're gonna go about 30 more seconds and then get into position for a plank. And so this one again, we're gonna hold this one for about 45 seconds. So again, if you're, if you're feeling like it's stressing your back, just remember, you can be like this, but you can drop your knees down and that will take the weight for you. Um, if you want to start in that position, that's fine too. Then just kind of keep your, try to think of your back staying nice and flat. Don't bridge your back any more than you'd have to, but also don't let your back sag down because that's going to hurt your, your lumbar spine. So just think of a tabletop for your back. You know, somebody could put like a nice glass of water there and it wouldn't spill off, hopefully. All right, here we go. I'm going to reset. And we're gonna go 45 seconds. So here we are up in the air doing a plank. Remember, thinking tabletop, two by four. You guys are killing it. Coming up on 20 seconds. Coming up on 30 seconds. Five more. Three, two, one. Cool, 45, beautiful. Reset. Okay, now we're going to do our V-ups. So again, remember, if you're not doing the full um, V-up, that's perfectly fine. You want to be peeling those shoulders up. So your legs are going to be up. You're peeling your shoulders up and touching your knees. Peeling your shoulder up, touching your knees. Don't, don't like come up fast. It's a nice, it's in the way, nice controlled movement. So peel them up and then come up and touch those shins. If you want to do the whole V, then peel them up 
and really touch the shins and keep that back floating and the feet don't ever touch the ground. If you want to make it harder, throw a weight um, in your hands. But as you peel up off the ground, just, just be picturing you're making a V. You're not making a C. So try to make a V. And then if you're peeling your shoulders, you're making like a, like a nice soft U. So you're bringing your, your shoulders up nice and far off the ground as much as you can. And then you're laying them back down, not dropping. Let them lay down nice like you're peeling them back down to the ground. Then. So we're going to do 10 of those as well. And here we go. One, whoa, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. So now since you're on the ground, we are going to do the bird dogs again. Bird dogs are where we're pointing with our hands and our leg, pointing at a pheasant. You know, it doesn't have to be a pheasant. It could be anything you want. Um, and we're going to do, again, five on each side. So as you stick that back leg, though, make sure that leg is nice and strong. Float it out behind you. Don't let it drop. Don't go too high. Nice level. Everything we try to do is like on a level plane. It just keeps our back uh, healthier. So we're going to do five on each side. So you pick whatever side you want. Um, I'm going to start with my left. Yes, that's my left. Yeah. So let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. Switch sides. One, two, three, four. Five. Nicely. All right. The old block passes. Again, if you don't want to pass a block, that's fine. Then we're just going to be doing the same shoulder uh, peel. If you don't want to do just, if you want to do more than the shoulder peel, just come up and bring your knees in. So as you're coming up, you're touching your knees, you're going back down. If you don't want to come all the way up, peel your shoulders up, but at the same time, bring those knees in. <laughs> You guys knew a dog would show up sooner or later. So you want to just peel those shoulders up nice and easy and touch your knees. Hey, go somewhere. All right, we're going to do 10 of those. All right, here we go. So 10, nice and easy. Don't, don't, not, not herky jerky. Nice and easy. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. So we're going to take two minutes again, starting. You guys are cruising. You're halfway. I have to write notes to myself or I forget everything. So whenever I do stuff, I try to keep a, um, not a log, but like just if something was hurting, why it was hurting, I can, I can kind of figure it out then. So I kind of like write notes on each exercise when I do them. So I don't know if you guys, like it's almost like journaling. Um, so you kind of like, I like to know what, worked for me and what didn't um, because then I won't repeat if something hurt me or just was just not helpful. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to look back and go, oh, that's what that's what that was. Or like if like I said with hardware in my back, um, I'll get tweaky like when it's wet like this, I feel it. So it's like, oh, I write that down too, like if it snowed, if it's cold, things like that that will affect how I feel. Um, and then I'm able to kind of plot a better course for if I'm trying to rehabilitate or train for something. Just over a minute, so about 40 seconds. And we're going to start right with a plank, the front planks again. Now, what was that that you were just holding? <laughs> so curious. What Wait, what was I holding? 
Um, no, are, you, are you familiar with the Awkward Yeti? No. What is that? It's a, so the Awkward Yeti has all kinds of body parts that talk to each other. The most prominent are the heart and the brain. <laughs> and the heart is like the fleeting one and the brain is the studious rule follower. And so I, he was kind of pillow shaped. And so I decided he would be good to pass back. I, th I thought he had a uh. mask on. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Too funny. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Danelle. <laughs> Just very, very curious. <laughs> All right, we are going to reset this. And so we're going to go for a minute on our plank. So go ahead and get get down on your belly again on the ground. Tuck your elbows. <laughs> nice and tight. Wait, no, hold on. Let me, let me spotlight you. There you oh. go. <laughs> Those are cute. Who's the left guy? He's the heart. heart. Oh, that's the <laughs> heart. I get it. Yeah, and here's the brain. Too cute, too funny. Sorry to interrupt. I think we should leave it on. I think we should leave it on Danielle because that or Danelle. Danelle, sorry, I said your name wrong because your cat was so adorable. <laughs> I would love to watch your cat while doing exercises. That would make me happy. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> Luffy. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, hi. Where? <laughs> oh my goodness! It's adorable. So oh, baby. I want it. <laughs> that that was the endorphin rush part of the That's exercise. Right. <laughs> Greg, you've lost control. I I did. I, did. I just lost the plot completely. All right. I went out the back, window. Back you do uh, the workout. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with the plank. Let's go. Um, bye. Uh, we're gonna do this for a minute. And so roll um, elbows tucked under you, and you're going to just be lifting yourself up nice and easy. And remember, if we're doing a half a plank, then we want to just make sure that our back stays nice and flat, right? So don't, um, don't sag into it. Um, just pull yourself up, bring those knees under, and just let yourself rise up that way. Or if you're, if you're, if you're feeling like that hurts, then you want to be pushing up with that stretch like we did in the beginning, tightening your core there the whole time. So when I was stretched, I wasn't tightening my core at all, but when I come up like this, it's like a pseudo plank. So I'm peeling my chest up off the ground, pushing with my arms, and I'm tightening my core up and holding myself there. So that's another version of doing the same kind of a plank that we're doing. So again, we're gonna go for a minute, pull up into your plank, and I started the timer. And you, you should know that the, the world plank record was broken right before um, the COVID thing by an ex-marine, a 64-year-old ex-marine, and he planked, I think, for almost nine hours continuously, which is ridiculous. Um, and he really didn't look that tired at the end. I mean, he looked tired, but holy cow, I can't, I think it's like eight hours and 54 minutes or something crazy like that. I don't know how he went to the bathroom. I was trying to figure that one out. And how he ate, or did he not eat? He probably didn't eat. Just coming up on 45. Keep that nice, strong tabletop. 55. That's a minute. Great. Reset that. And now we're going to go to our V-ups. This is our third round. So again, remember, you don't have to do the whole V. You can do half a V. You can be peeling your shoulders up to do the V, or you can be rising up that halfway point with the V. Kind of up to you, whichever you feel good about. Or I guess really whichever one your body feels good about. All right, we're gonna do 10 of these, and feet are up off the ground, and here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Oh, bird dogs. So bird dogs again, we're on our hands and knees. 
We're going to do five each side. So I'm going to start left side. Um, and this one, when we do our fifth one, as we're extended, I want you just to roll in and just try to touch your knee. Um, on my right side, I have a hard time doing that because of my prosthetic. So just kind of ball up and tuck in and then extend again and then stop. So we're just going to add that one little thing. So we're going to do five on each side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and then just tuck that elbow under you. Try to touch your leg behind you. And then switch sides. Five more. One, two, three, four, five. And again, roll under and just try to touch your elbow to your knee underneath you. You just kind of extend your spine. Beautifully done. Okay, last thing are the block passes. So on your backs again, and we're gonna just do 10 of these. Nice and controlled, nice, slow movements. Just fluid, just think, try to be as fluid as you possibly can. Okay, here we go, 10 in a row. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That is the third round. So I'm gonna start a timer again. We're gonna do one more round. You guys are killing it. All right, I'm gonna actually put water in my water bottle. Okay, we're about a minute 15. We are gonna go to 2.30 to, to take a break. On your journal that you keep? Yes. How do you, how do you organize it? Like, do you? Um, so this one is, is by day. This one is just like how many exercises we're doing. Um, how many exercises? Oh man, that's really white. You gotta come closer, I think, probably. So I write them down big so I can see them. Oh. And then I'm writing, you keep, my handwriting's horrible. Um, I'm writing down how much I'm doing and what it feels like. Um, oh. so don't, I don't make it very complicated at all. Um, like my climbing, uh, I don't, I used to, I used to think it was a good idea to journal, but now I kind of, I think it might be a great idea. I don't do it. I should do it. My wife did it for a little bit. Um, it's a, just a great way to track progress or not progress mm -hmm. either one. Um, I feel like I've been looking for something simple anyways. to do like that, just to keep up with what I'm doing. Because everything it, I've it been helps. Seems it, it kind of makes you um, a little bit more accountable because you'll look at it, especially if you do it every day. Like if I'm doing something down here, 
I've noticed it during this um, kind of the quarantine stuff. It, it helps me stay a bit more accountable because then if I don't do it, um, I have one up here. Jim has turned into a smiley face. <laughs> so these are like, and it's just a page of paper. It's nothing fancy. Um, that's just like a, like a workout and just keeping track of how many done and how and when. And then this is like, I'll write out. If I don't write out a workout, I forget it. And so these are TRX bands, which are those bands that hang down and you can do core with those. Um, so I have to write down everything. So I keep it all in one notebook on my desk. And then when I'm ready, I just kind of pull it back out and keep track of what I'm doing. Or I'll forget, I forget everything. I, I right. do thank you for sharing that. Of course. We are gonna start with a plank and we're gonna do a minute. So we're down on our bellies. This is the last round, last round, and then it's the weekend. All right, here we go up into a plank for a whole minute. And I've only been attacked by one dog so far. That's pretty good. So we're coming up on 30 seconds. There's 31. There's 40. There's 50. 10 seconds. That's a minute. Awesome job. Now we're going to do our V ups. 10 of those. Well, I lost my weight. Okay. 10 of those. Again, nice and smooth, nice and fluid. No herky jerky. Ah, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. Bird dogs. Get to be a bird dog. Um, again, we're going to do five. And on that fifth one, we're going to take our elbow and tuck it into our knee. So whichever arm you have out and your leg is out, as you come back in, just tuck that under as far as you can get comfortably. You just want to get that nice stretch in your back. Um, that's what we're trying to do. So nice. Remember flat your leg and your arm. You're flat. You're kind of, don't be sagging. Just think nice pointer stance. All right, here we go. Five each side. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to tuck under, roll that back nice and then get back in our stance. Now we're gonna go into the bird dog on the other side. Five of those. One, two, three, four, five, and just tuck that elbow down to the knee, let that spine roll up, and then back into our four stance. Now we're back to the floor for our last thing, which are gonna be our block passes. And we are going to do 10 of those. All right, here we go. Watching everybody. All right, here we go. We're going to do 10 of those. Here's, whoa, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You guys killed it and you all made it. So that was what we did. We did planks, 
for 30 second intervals. Then we did V ups, we did 10 of each four times. Then we did bird dogs, we did five on each side. The last two rounds, we added that tuck at the end. And then we did block passes and we did 10 of those. Um, again, remember those adaptations, different ways to do it, it's all up to you. Um, whatever is going to cause you, like if it, if it hurts, something isn't right, so you should kind of back off. I think people get like aggressive with core sometimes and they'll feel it in their lower back or they'll feel it in their sides and things. We don't want that. We want to be like being sore is okay, but you won't be sore yet. You'll be sore the next day if you're doing something. So just feel like you should, should be, it should be a good, you get done, you should feel nice and loose. Uh, my back feels good now. My front feels good. So it should feel good when you're done. You shouldn't be like, oh my God. So just, just know that. That's it. You guys killed it. <laughs>